God, that thing is just pure sex. Does it sound nice? Yeah. Did it sound oh, nice? What do you think? Let's yeah. <laughs> Hi guys, Alex Peak Performance Reviews. Welcome to another vlog and welcome to another video. This time, a car review. Um, and actually, it's a kind of subscribers stroke friends uh, car and um, review for you guys. And we've got a Mercedes CL55 AMG, 5.4 litre, supercharged motor, um, automatic gearbox, lots of other things, but I'm gonna let the owner tell you a bit more about the car. But I'm just gonna drive it, critique it, to the owner's dismay. No, I'm sure they're gonna be fine with it. But um, yeah, really, really looking forward to it. Um, I haven't driven something like this. I do love an older car. Um, it's not particularly old, but uh, again, like I say, I'll let the owner um, describe everything and let you know more about the car. So yeah, I think it's a good time to introduce the owner. Like I said, I was gonna talk or try and talk a lot, load about the car, but at the end of the day, I don't, I don't know it. So Greg, tell me a bit more about the car. Things like tech spec, Norton to 60s, anything you know, and maybe a little bit story as well so yeah let us know right well it's a 2003 mercedes cl55 amg under there is a 5.4 litre supercharged v8 493 horsepower and the plate just a funny story i bought that years and years ago um, and it was on the other car which i've still got the cl500 um, and i just put that on there and thought oh, that just kind of fits now doesn't it um, i can't remember the torque figure We'll have to do some That's research right. on that. Alex. A lot, we said, didn't we? Yeah, <laughs> That's good. It's got the five-speed automatic transmission, which has got the buttons on the steering wheel, as Alex explained earlier when he was driving it. You can also shift it manually on the gear stick. Um, the later, the facelift models of these, which this is, if it was a standard CL500, would have had the seven-speed automatic. But for the CL55s and the CL600s, which had the 5.8 twin turbo V12, they couldn't put the seven speed in because it wasn't man enough for all the horsepower and the torque. Um, I've always loved them. I've, I can't remember when I first saw one, but when I first saw one, I thought, you know what, for something that isn't American, which is what I've grown up loving and collecting, that's about the prettiest car ever. So I thought one of these days I'll have one. Couldn't afford one, bought the CL500. As I say, I've still got it. Um, and then this came up just before Christmas, and I love it, love yeah. everything about it. A huge spec on it, um, widescreen sat nav DVD player, like, I don't know how many zones, climate control, it does the front driver, front passenger, and the rear is all separate. Um, it's got the sunshade in the back, all the rear headrests, are, you can do them on the switches. Um, Ton, what else? The seats are heated, the seats are cooled, the seats massage you, mm. the seats are like 12 way power, up, down, in, out. Yeah, yeah. Headrests are all electric as well. Um, it's worth my, me asking you actually, Greg. You kind of touched on the fact that you're into American muscle cars and whatnot. Um, tell us a bit more about what you do as well. You've got a kind of um, something you do on the side as such. Yeah, your company. I've got a local workshop um, and we just do some work on a select few customers' cars, um, anything from major restoration up to just sort of fine tuning and finicking things, really. Um, always got a few cars kicking around. I've always got a queue of customers, which is nice not having to look for work. It just sort of comes and finds me, but I suppose that will fill another video as and when the time comes. Yeah, yeah, Greg's got basically some American cars, some American muscle cars. I haven't done anything on old school American muscle cars. I've always loved them quietly in the background. So for me, it'd be a dream to do some really, really cool stuff with some old American V8s and stuff. So we are going to line that up for you as well. But that's the different video. So um, yeah, Greg, pop the Vonnet for us as well so we can have a little look around the engine bay as well it'd be quite good absolutely yeah, there is the um kind of work of art so to speak but yeah and i like to say these are i think like some of the modern ones they're hand built aren't they they're all hand built yeah and which is awesome why. you've got the bit frank, just there frank sitwert built that yeah so if, if you, you know, know him or you're watching yeah. frank give good shout out to frank Thank yeah you the engine nice one frank it's uh purring like a kitten yeah. nice one um but yeah no it's a bit of a beast isn't it um 
kind of not just um, we're talking about kind of the the amazing V8 that's in it. I, I said obviously briefly um, driven this and it's re very very impressive, very smooth, and I can't wait to kind of do the performance test. But it's actually got a lot of other really really nice things on it as well. Um, I noticed that the brakes are actually a really decent size as well. They're like they're vent huge. vented and they're yeah they're damn big. Weirdly, a lot of performance cars of old they used to have power, and then they wouldn't even think about the braking, yeah. which is obviously That'll devastatingly and deadly. Car video. Like my Supra, for example, the J-Spec Supra had quite a bit of power. It was a light car, so it was very quick, but it had um, single one uh, pot um, floating disc, uh, floating um, caliper. Atrocious. They were awful. You'd do 170 mile an hour, you'd go to stop, and you just prayed basically. <laughs> but yeah, these have got really, really big front and rear brakes. It looks like I was going to say they're probably six piston yeah, and four and four on the rear. So um, it's great, and actually it's good for me to know because I'm yet to kind of push this a little bit more. So I'm looking forward to that, and that should be uh, good. So um, we don't want to be replacing them too quick because if you was to do, I bet they're expensive. Pads, front and rear, you're looking at about three thousand pounds. Yeah, do you know what? I probably wouldn't mind asking you a bit more on that because I suppose people watching on a, a review like this, they probably may be interested in buying one. So let's go through the kind of fundamentals of ownership. I don't want to talk about it too much, but tell, well, how long have you owned it first and foremost? How I've owned this since October of last year. Yeah. So what's that? Five months, coming up six months. But I'm guessing before you bought, you probably did your research and I looking into how much things cost. In, into these things for years yeah. and years. And as I've already said, I've, ha I've got the CL500 still that I bought thinking one day I might end up with one of these. Um, their Achilles heel, common knowledge, is the um, pneumatic suspension. The pumps go out, the legs leak. The legs on these are £850 each plus VAT. You've obviously got four. The pump is about £1,500 plus VAT. Ouch. We're not all going to be going to Mercedes Benz to replace these. No. Cars. There are companies that can recondition yeah. the shocks. I've had a reconditioned shock put on my other car and it cost me £150. The pumps, if you service them, change the fluid in them, change the filters in them, it shouldn't be a problem. This, at some point, has had a pump in it. I know that because it's got an absolute full, full service history. And, and I would say to anyone, if you're going to spend the amount of money that these cost, get one that's got every piece of paperwork from day dot. That way you know it's been looked after. They're going to be driven. Arguably, they're going to be abused, but they're not some sort of hot hatch that some boy's going to jump in like, I, I guess, a, a Me. M3. Me. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> an M3 is just going to be destroyed, isn't it? Because the yeah. person that buys it Absolutely. is going to drive it to destruction day in, day out. These are more of a sedate cruiser, but if you want to do 155, it will do it. But, the, but realistically, these kind of motors from AMG, we know, or anyone who's a petrol head that's watching on, who's a, a fan of our channel, will know, I suspect, of how um, reputable and amazing the, the AMG guys are. And like I say, these hand-built motors, they're probably, if you probably pulled apart the innards of that, I bet they're probably something pretty special in there. Yeah. Uh, I, akin to the to probably the strength internals that would take way more horsepower than they've put on this car, for, for example. example. That will be, that will be. I suspect there'll be some race-like components, very high-end components within that. I know from any of even the new modern AMGs, of the hand-built motors, the, the motors are incredible. If you open them apart, the, 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 the mechanics are incredible, absolutely incredible. You know, but well, case in point, my E55 AMG, that you didn't really see earlier, but mm -hmm. walked past it. It's done 203,000 miles. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, still goes like a rocket, not leaking anything, bone yeah. dry from top to bottom. Yeah. Um, they're, they're built, I mean, they're built obviously for a price, mm. but when you spend that money, you're going to get top quality engineering. Yeah, and this would have been a this would have been an expensive car. I bet when it came out, what was this retail? This car when it came out. This actual car sitting here, um, I think it show show up on the HPI check I did was 104,000 um, and, and and this is the age what is what what reg is this again 2003, 2003. so back in 2003 this was 105,000 pounds yeah, today's been... standard that would have been a 160 grand car I bet Quite probably yeah so it's it's a very expensive car so and and if you don't mind me asking Greg ballpark park fit
figure just um, so we kind of know how much are these bought for, give or take. You don't have to say how much you paid no, for it, but how much... High mileage ones you can pick up for about 10, low mileage ones with full, full service history, 15 to 20. That's crazy. So that's crazy, because this, this is the way I look at it. This car was £105,000. £105,000 for a reason. That motor probably is a massive expense in that mo and, it, and it probably will stay reliable that's the great thing if it went yes i'm guessing it'd be horrendously expensive potentially if it went the chances are it's not going to go unless you start so throwing rock. big superchargers on it and you're th you know pushing thousand dollars back which you don't typically do with a car like this i don't think but that is going to stay reliable that is if you maintain that in the right way that is going to be stout um the one thing i always say when um, and i always knew, knew from old mercedes is you you stay away from manuals typically with mercs and you go with the autos you or you can't buy them no. but but they they do an amazing automatic gearbox when they do a manual you kind of stay away from them i always remember that and they don't do many anyway yeah. but the auto boxes are great in these and like i say the motor on an amg like this is outstanding but um yeah no thanks for showing me around the car um, i think we should go and drive it and let's see what the Nord 60 is Nord 60 what is the standard factory time you were saying 4.8 4.8 4.8. There are people on the internet that say that's unrealistic. Yeah. It's actually more like 4.3. Okay, so it's weird because modern cars typically, modern manufacturers typically lie and they lie to the extent of where you actually do get better. A lot of older vehicles used to have things like they'll say 0 60 4.8 and actually they do worse, yeah. I found. So it'll be intriguing to see what it does. It's not the most amazing day. It's quite a cold day. It's probably real field temperature today is probably five or six degrees, I reckon. It says it's rear wheel drive rear wheel traffic we'll be we'll be careful we'll find somewhere decent to do it um but it's 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 slightly dewy and cold and it every now and again rains so we'll let you know of the conditions the moment we do it but um i think it will be very hard work to get a 4.8 i'm not saying it won't because actually i don't even know what this feels like yet because i haven't put a foot down it yet but i'm sure it's really impressive but i can't wait but it'll be intriguing and interesting to see how close we get to that 4.8 because 4.8 is even today's standards that's so seriously quick so yeah so it's really really good no thanks for showing us around and uh, yeah let's get driving it a bit more about the, you were saying about the suspension and I'm, when you said about the suspension it's air suspension correct it's hydraulic hydraulic Oil in it, yes. Okay, and you'll you'll see from the video, um, Greg was kind of pressing it up and down and showing it kind of going up and down, so you can adjust that and make it kind of go more hunkered down on the road and lower, so it's, you know more sporty feel, and you can have it nice and high, so you can actually get over speed bumps up as well. So um, yeah, nice kind of uh, user friendly thing there on the suspension. It just goes down to its, its cruising setting. Yeah, Stay nice. Aside from the suspension, you you can turn the traction control off on this, just ESP off. And yeah. Is it just um, simple one press and you can kind of take it off a little bit? Because some cars you can hold it and then it turns it off completely. You think Do you know if it's like that? Yeah, no, I kind of sometimes ask this. A lot of cars are like that though, aren't they? Even old ones, but no, that's fine. We may do it later. It'll be worth kind of um, playing around with later to see how it feels and how much how intrusive I suppose it is and how much slip it allows. The yeah, it's always sensors is in a Mercedes of this calibre, mm -hmm. so like an AMG car or a performance car, you can't actually fully turn it off. Okay, yeah, they, you they can do. Turn it off, but then it will do its thing still, it's still got a little bit Yeah, of yeah, yeah, that's that's I'm intrigued to see. So obviously we've been driving around this quite a bit just but uh, around kind of rural roads but like um, in a lot of 30 mile an hour zones so I have not had a chance to put my foot down it. So one thing I will say is it's comfortable, it's really really comfortable, it's got, it rides really really well, it feels like a luxury cruiser, it's just it's lovely, it's really calm, sedate, quiet. But obviously, as you'll Im imagine, a car with near 500 horsepower is going to be pretty raucous and fun um, when you put your foot down. It's rear wheel drive, lots of power, lots of torque. Um, I'm excited. So I'm going to wait till we get a bit straighter because obviously it's like anything. Um, I've gone from 300 horsepower cars. I've driven you know cars more powerful than this, but this is an old school uh, mechanical kind of 500 horsepower car. So it's different. So I need to kind of feel my way into kind of seeing what this car feels like. But it certainly feels nice around these corners. I'm not going fast, but I'll go. Maybe this is a, a good time to kind of put my foot down. Let's give it a go. Woohoo! Yeah, nice. 
yeah that's that's definitely it it takes a little while to kick down i don't know i'm sure if you change it into the uh, auto uh, modes um it'll probably kick down quicker um so it takes a little while to kick down unlike you know probably some of the really modern gen you know automatic cars with the dsg etc all the modern stuff's got 27 clutches so it's yeah thinking in advance. exactly and it can pre-engage yeah, you know gears and stuff like that. yeah so but but so yeah a little bit of time to kick down but when it kicks down, bloody hell, it puts you in your seat. That, it's definitely got plenty of... It just keeps yeah, it's, it no, it just keeps going and going and going. And it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, the motor is silky smooth and it? it's really, really nice. It sounds lovely as well once it's going. No, no, it's, it's still yeah. From here, it's quite you know um, quite enough, but it's obviously you know got a hell of a lot of poke. But that's just Greg's 500 laser um, uh, jammers and radars kind of going off, just telling us we've got to slow down a tiny bit. We're not going too fast, obviously. We're going all the like kind of legal speed. Yeah, yeah. You, it's it's like anything like this, isn't it? You put your foot down in this, and you can be going illegal speeds pretty quickly, and um, you can be losing your license pretty easily. But it, yeah, no, 100. percent We we were going what 200 miles an hour then, Greg? No, but, and um, you just it felt like you were only going 30, you know. <laughs> but no, seriously, you genuinely, yeah, you genuinely feel like you're going 30 and you're going 70. It's um, it's so it manages its speed really, really well in a straight line, certainly. And the, yeah, the body roll and the control of the car is actually really, really nice. A very pleasant place to be. And uh, yeah, I'm enjoying my drive. It's, um, it's really nice. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's really comfortable. You could drive across a continent. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And normally anything uh, where you're getting up to the, I'd say rel relatively wild figures, 500 horsepower, a lot of uh, horsepower, you kind of would often associate that with a lot more wilder crazy things and and they and then when you're talking about those more wilder crazy things they tend to be really stiffly sprung and massively uncomfortable on a long run like you say if you were going cross continents um yeah those kind of cars uh, after 100 miles 200 miles you're pulling your hair out your back's aching I, I could imagine you'd do thousand miles in this if you wanted to and it's so comfortable so so comfortable really really nice so I know the roads around these areas and I know they're nice and sweeping, there's a lot of cams and crests and stuff, so it, is, it does really put um, suspension and steering to the test. So I'm going to wait till we get to kind of some zones where we can go a tiny bit faster and I'm going to give this a little bit of a push, not, not anything crazy, but a little bit of a push just to see what everything feels like. Um, steering feedback, um, it's quite light. Some people like light, I prefer heavier, I'll be honest with you, I'm Mr. Racy Race Driver and I like really, really heavy steering. It's a little bit light, but then as a comfort thing, beautiful. I, I, I can understand, like round, uh, you know, in a town, when you want to move, rotate the car, turn it round, park it, perfect. It's not too light, don't get me wrong, it's not hideously light. I hate cars that you can kind of turn on a, on a little finger. It's got a bit of weight and assistance to it. A little bit of delay in the rack. Again, it's typical of a more older vehicle. Yeah. Um, and a lot of, um, you know, even modern vehicles have like, you know, uh, a fair bit of assistance. This has um, quite a bit of electronic assistance, but at the same time, nice enough feedback. Um, but no, it's really, really good. I say once I push it a little bit harder, you might get a little bit more feedback come through the steering. So I'll be intrigued to see how that feels. But yeah, that's the first kind of feeling on that. Gear, um, gearbox definitely really silky smooth and lovely um, can't fault that no horrible clunks over and through gear changes really really nice that's good to hear Motor that, that could get expensive yeah yeah it feels it feels lovely really really good and like you said actually greg um body roll um in the sports mode really really is taken care of um even though like i say it feels like a more older gen type of steering feel and it's not really really hard it's a nice halfway house when you kind of turn into the corner because of the older feel in the steering rack 
you turn it and you kind of half expect there to be that kind of big blancmange <clears throat> roll and that suspension roll. You would from a car this huge. From a car this big, definitely. And, and it really isn't. You look at the front end and I wonder if it comes across in the video when I show you some of the front facing um, video footage, guys. But if you just look at the front of this, the front of this it's beautiful. And if you and actually, brake do you hard, know, it won't nose dive because it pumps all the hydraulic oil to the front. Okay, that's interesting to know. And do you know what? Actually, um, it, like I say, the steering does come back a little bit. I think the weight does come back a bit when you throw it a bit more into a corner. And that's it's really nice. That is a that's a that's a properly quick car, mate. It's a properly quick car. You can feel the power. You can feel a hell of a lot of torque in there. Like you say, what what this covers ground and the way it covers ground and it goes through the revs. The way I'd describe it is relentless. The yeah. power and the torque is relentless. Yeah. Very smooth. Very linear. Lovely linear power. Yeah. Um, and it's different to other cars, especially modern cars. It's 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 as silky smooth, or if anything, more silky smooth motor than anything I've ever seen out there even in the modern gen it's impressive that is a lovely lovely motor up front there it actually it feels properly, isn't it? really you can feel that but um and I've always no. said if you need to buy if you need to who yeah. needs to unless you're a bank robber yeah if you want to buy a car a fast car that you can sustain a high speed for a long period of time you can only buy a German car yeah absolutely. the auto bar's got no speed limit absolutely this to be a little bit more roly-poly than I'm feeling I'll be honest with you because I'm used to so many cars that I drive supercars hot hatches that have fantastic chassis you can make a good comparison because you've I got most to compare it yeah to, but I honestly thought this would be a little bit more roly I didn't think I'd be disappointed I know I knew I'd love it big power rear wheel drive recipe for Alex to, to love for sure but I'm really surprised at how well it handles I obviously spent a lot of money on setting it up. It's absolutely beautiful. It really, and, and it's a fun chassis. It's a really fun, pliant but rewarding feel with a lot of feedback. And the kick down is, you know what, it's, it, I say it's, a, it's lazy. You know, it is lazy. relatively lazy, but the more you drive it, the more you get used to it, and you kind of know when to put your foot down, and then you know you've got a little bit of a delay. When you know how to drive it, actually, it becomes very, very fun, mm. and it, it, it kind of suits the character of the whole car. Yeah, that is really good, mate. It is really good. I'm very impressed. It brings really a smile face, doesn't it? For a, for a huge coupe, I guess a lot of it's in the engine and transmission. Engine, engineering, yeah. You you look underneath cars like this, and you see uh, things like the drive shafts and everything that just looks industrial. They they know it has to take the power and it has to take the torque all day long, mm. and and it's over engineered in many respects. Kind of slow yeah. down, let the car gap. Actually, it's a good chance to t test the brakes. Let's have a little go and see what these brakes are like. Straight away, obviously, I've driven it, so I know what they feel. On first instance, there's a lot of travel. Very typical of an old school car. All all cars do that. There's a delay. It, race cars have very responsive, automatic feel. A lot of new cars, even with good uh, brakes, still have play. Basically, you put your foot down. It almost feels like there's air there, and then all of a sudden get bite and you get grip yeah. the brakes are huge on this but it's a heavy car so even though it looks like it has some really really good brakes does it break this weight half decently let's have a check i'm going to do like some crazy emergency stop I, but i am if you with your yeah, blessing on. greg yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a bit of a heavy break no it's good it's good okay so now I'm going to do another brake again like that because I've now got heat in them mm. so it's a better test. I'm going to go too fast. Ready? No, it broke. 
breaks really well. It breaks Stop really it. well. So, so it is. It feels old school in the way it, it breaks, in the sense of, like I said, you get a bit of travel. But it almost feels like there's air in there. Loads of old cars do this. Loads of old cars. It's not that there's something wrong. That's how they are. But a lot of people like that. People like progressive tension on brakes. I like it really super firm. I'm, yeah, because I'm used to race. Yeah, yeah, I'm used to race cars. It doesn't mean I dislike the braking in this because it's outstanding. I mean, it's a heavy car, but that those those brakes are yeah, outstanding. Size of it. Yeah, it, it's a huge car, but though, but and it weighs like you said, Greg, two point three ton. But my God, it still breaks. So that's encouraging again to someone that would want a car like this because. If you've got a car and it's so quick, it's got so much power, so much torque, you still need it to brake. Yeah. These have got big brakes on them, and again, rest assured, it does brake. It's got incredible brakes. So, but no, um, we've driven it a little bit more. It's on the sports, um, uh, the sports button, the ABC Sports uh, mode is off. So it's in hundred percent. It's in like a comfort mode, and for me, one hundred percent is softer. This feels lovely and soft, however, I would nearly always have it on the sports mode because I always like cars a little bit yeah. more firmer. Should we get past this? Put yeah, up go again? for it. Yeah. We'll make sure we're okay. And this is why, and actually that was a, a, a point of how the softness suspension, you see, we you had to... Edit we, my place out of the video. Yeah, didn't? yeah, you were scared. We had to transition to get, as you would, to get round um, an object. You get round it really, really quick because it's got it kicks down, and the moment it kicks down, loads of torque, loads of power, easy to get around traffic like that. But on with the sports mode off and that in comfort, could you feel how much more roll yeah. there is on the transition? Yeah, you go left and right, and the and the the whole car has to take a bit more time to check in. No problem, no problem. We we always had that, Greg. I know I, shit, I made you shit yourself there a little bit, but it was always you know. I'm just used we, to being sitting that side. Now exactly. I know how the media feels. I, I know, you know, how, I'm I'm the worst passenger in the whole world, so I know exactly how you feel. For you and her. with a kick yeah. and, and a bit of punch well a lot of punch yeah. say. But, yeah, um, punch chassis, please, right. please. absolutely but you know what the chassis is really really good I can't complain about the chassis at all really really impressed so Greg you were talking about um, uh, fuel consumption I keep on seeing the fuel trip and I see it go down to like you know single figures and then obviously I see it recover and it, it looks like it does half these um, figures so tell me more about what you know, because obviously you live with it. What kind of fuel consumption miles per gallon do you get out of this car? Um, if you drive it like you are going to love it and take care of it, not so much like you'd drive your nan to the hospital for a checkup, but if you were to go careful, you will get over 30 to the gallon. Oh wow. Yeah, oh wow. That is amazing. And I, I, I know this because it's my car. So That's I'm crazy. not just going by, oh, I read this That's on the internet, this is, this is my car. Um, <clears throat> if you drive it like you stole it, absolutely you'll get 10, 8, 10. That's amazing. Um, is, is there any, uh, other than the fact that obviously it's, it's engineered so well, there's nothing like a bit like the modern jet, there's nothing crazy fancy and mental going on as to why it does that. It doesn't have um, individual cylinder um, shut down and weird crazy no, things like that. You'd think I'd know, wouldn't you, being up no, there for the owner? No, it, it, it probably doesn't. I think if you the, if it did, I think you'd probably know about it. This is it, the but... W215 model, okay. the W216 model, which re was released in 2006 when this was discontinued. Yeah. That I believe has the cylinder cut off. Oh, okay. So, so, they, so it does have that sophistication in a later the, gen. Yeah, they, that's the, incredible. The standard CL500, that model is a 5.5 litre. Um, whereas the standard CL500 in this model was a 5 litre. So the engine is bigger. So it's a completely different car inside and out. Um, and if people are interested in these, then they'll obviously have seen them on the internet and done some research, read about them, whatever. 
um, but the, the fuel economy in those is even better. The bizarre thing is, if you want the um, the most economical CL class from this model, you want the CL600 because it has the fuel shuttle, mm -hmm. the 6 litre V12 or the 5.8 twin turbo V12. Yeah, that's crazy. So it's like, let's buy the biggest one with a couple of turbos on it and it'll be the most economical if you drive it carefully. Oh, that's insane, yeah. But that's testament, I mean, no matter what way you look at it, whether it's got the um, uh, cylinder har harvesting and things like that or not, um, there must be some engine, clever engineering going on to be able to do that because I know for a fact if you've got a 1300 to 1500 kilogram hot hatch and you can get a average of anywhere near 30 miles per gallon it's impressive and yeah. there's not many to do it and I know from testing a lot of hot hatches most of them even when you're cruising will do between 25 and 35 and typically 25 to 28 to 29 cruising yeah. my Civic Type R does around 30 to 35 and it's really incredible it's really really good but for a 2.3 ton, 500, near 500 horsepower V8 supercharged Mercedes, yeah. to be able to do 30 miles per gallon is mind blowing. When well, you, 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 you can tell from my reaction. Yeah. I thought you were going to say 13 to 15 or 17 miles per gallon. I suppose real world it could be, but because you're going to drive it like it's built to be driven, otherwise you wouldn't buy one. No, but but you can do 30 mile yeah, per gallon. You can you, realistically do 30 mile per gallon if you hold it and sustain it. When you're cruising on cruise control at 75 miles an hour, which I tend to do on the motorway, which is because good. like most people, I need my license yeah. for my job. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it will return 30 to the gallon all day long. So That's it's incredible. Incredible. Yeah, you would think that it's going to be horrendous to be able to own and maintain. Yes, if something goes wrong, I suspect it's big money. You were saying earlier on a little bit about that. Um, but they are going to stay typically very reliable. They're stout, they're well engineered after. motors. If they're looked after, yeah, exactly. It's like everything, if it's abused, yeah. and not looked after, it's going to hurt. Yeah, absolutely. This, this has got full service history. This one has had everything when it was due. I look after it. I always make sure when it's due, something it gets in. Yeah. Prevention is better than cure. That's what absolutely. they say, isn't it? So, no. Yeah, massively impressed. Massively impressed with that. That is great. Seem like it got a. What do you do? 5.6. Really? 5.6. That's yeah. slow. It's slow, but it's a first, and I think that up, that other one's a bit uphill. I'll tell you what, also, stick it in auto. Yeah, it, I goes. bet you any money there's ways to get this quicker, because that feels, I, I, I reckon, yeah, I reckon put it, you want it in sport. Right, so we're going to do one last 0 to 60 and see how we do. So, yeah, let's give it a go. Right, here we go. One, two, three. Yeah, it's. I, I personally think that um, your my car's slow as shit. No, 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 no. Or it, it won't necessarily shift or know when to shift. Like almost like a clutch pack. Um, clutch pack's kind of engaging, but. Um, yeah, we couldn't get better than a 5.5. 5 5.5s, I think they're still really, really good. But nonetheless, you know, deciding to go into first when it's already you know, slowly going, so you kind of, the, elapse, the time kind of starts to go, that's where you lose the time. And then once it gets going, it really gets going. And 5.5 five is still bloody quick. Like, really, really good. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was impressed with that. I was impressed with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. we've got the tension on us now. So there you have it. That is the end of our video and the end of my drive in this CL55 AMG. And let me summarize a few things of what I found. It may be something that you are in the market to uh, do. Obviously, Greg had spoken a lot about the kind of owning of the uh, car and the ins and outs of how his kind of ownership of it has been. But yeah, what is my kind of thoughts on it? Obviously, it's an older car, so things do feel that little bit older. And I've, I'm blessed with kind of driving all these mental exotic, you know, driver's cars including actually a AMG GTR, which is, you know, absolutely madness. It's almost like a modern version of something like this. But, you know, how does this fare against cars like that? Well, would it be fair to compare it to stuff like that? I suppose 
it would be unfair but at the same time you've got to a little bit so i will you know steering input like i said on the, on the drive is um i prefer it being stiffer but it's got a kind of nice medium type kind of feedback and feel so it's not too bad at all but the main thing i find is is the power the power delivery the, the smile it puts on your face and how the driver dynamics is so how the chassis feels and i'll be honest with you i went into this drive thinking that it was going to be a wallowy blancmange fit like feeling suspension and feeling really really old because there's you know modern things with fancy suspension setups now far more sophisticated than this even though it is sophisticated for its age i just thought it was going to be wibbly wobbly and it's actually blew me away it's an incredibly fun car to drive it's an incredibly fast car to drive and it's actually surprisingly efficient um but yeah the most important thing is and what we always try to find in a car is fun the fun factor and this has absolutely got it in abundance if you were in the market for something like this you could be safe in the knowledge it still can return 30 miles per gallon it can be had for an amazing value these days but more importantly it's going to put a smile on your face so if it's something that kind of ticks your box and it's something you are thinking about buying rest assured you're not going to be disappointed if you've got any questions or comments hit us up in the comment section um it may be something that i can answer or maybe you've got a question for greg i can pass those messages on to him and he can help me answer them for you as well so like i say hit us up in the comment section um but thank you so much for watching guys as always like share comment subscribe and we'll see you again in the next one bye for now